Hey, we are live. Hey, it's live. Yeah, All right. <laughs> um, hey, John, I like your shirt, man. Thanks. Um, you know, I think it's very seasonal. <laughs> <laughs> Yours looks uh, rather dashing on you as well. Thank you. Yeah, it just came in the mail. Yeah. Well, as folks can tell, neither one of us are Jim. <laughs> yeah, Jim, unfortunately, will not be able to join us today. But hopefully, between the two of us, we can keep the J theme alive and give you guys a good show. Yeah, and uh, since we don't do this regularly, uh, you know, we'll we'll fumble through it, and hopefully, folks will forgive us. But uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll have some fun. So what we got today? Uh, we got some new announcements, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think the cat's out of the bag on a few of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if anyone's been anywhere on Facebook today or or the forums, they've probably seen it. Yeah. Great. Well, I want to give uh, everyone a few few minutes to get those notifications that we're live here before we, we dive into things. Sure. But, um, it's been a lot of fun working, uh, working for Athern here. I, I, just past my uh, three months with the company here, and it's man. Has it been that long already? <laughs> I know it feels like forever. I looked up. I was looking on my time clock, and it said, "Oh, your seniority is six years and eight months." I'm like, "Oh my god! Like it's been that long?" <laughs> time flies feel like like trains. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. But... Yeah. Cool. Well, we've we've given everyone a couple of minutes, so uh, let's dive into this. Um, I'm gonna All right. Bring us over to the side to start with here. All right. So for July, uh, these are um, new product, new decorations that we need to um, um, have pre-orders placed by July thirtieth. July 30th. Okay. Did I skip too many pages? I'm sorry. Uh, possibly, but that's okay. It's it's like a sneak peek of a sneak peek. Yeah. You know, I got one of those fancy mouses that just likes to jump all over the place. <laughs> you can see the... <laughs> it's thinking it. about it. You know what? I'm gonna pull the screen off. And maybe All I'll... right. I'll try it again. <laughs> now, like I said, we don't do this often. We, you know, this is <laughs> unfamiliar equipment for us. And I, I spent an inordinate amount of time last night making my backdrop look uh, halfway presentable. <laughs> it, was, it was it was a mess. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this a different way, not full screen. There you go. There we go. Surf liners. Surf liners, yeah. These are, without a doubt, one of the most requested cars um, that Athern has received. I've been looking through all the email suggestions, and this car just continually comes up. I should say cars, because we're actually doing four different styles uh, so that you can have the entire right. train. Yeah, it's almost like a running joke how many requests we get for these. It seems like it's every week. Um, and, and, and finally, uh, all the requests paid off. Here they are. They're in Genesis, um, you know, full interiors, all the light features that you could possibly want. Uh, you got all four different car styles, as John mentioned, uh, just, and just beautiful artwork, too, you know, official Amtrak artwork that we got on these. Yeah. And each card is not only going to be individually numbered, but individually named, right? Yeah, that's right. The real cars um, all have unique names applied to them, different locations along this train's route. And so you see here you got Diablo Canyon, the uh, Coach Cafe car, and all the other cars have unique names as well. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. 
Now, you recently wrote on one of these. How how different is the business class versus the coach class for uh, writing? <laughs> well, you know, once you sit down and start looking around, it doesn't look all that different. The differences mostly start when they start bringing you the free food and the free wine, um, and then you start to then you start to enjoy business class a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> it also seems a bit less crowded usually, which I, I kind of like that. I was able to sit with with my friends without having to sit at opposite ends of the car or something. <clears throat> but yeah, the business class is a little bit different inside. It's got uh, two small galley areas for food service that the coaches don't have. And we did recreate that with the yeah, interior sure. details here. That image is coming up here real quick. Um, let's, let's talk about sound. Uh, there's, there's some unique sounds on these, even with the air horns, I've, I understand. Yeah, we just got through talking to uh, Matt Donnelly at Amtrak about him, and he was telling us about uh, the horn valve and the air pressure and the location of the horns. Like, yeah, it's the same horn as on other Amtrak equipment, but it sounds totally different. And I think a lot of people would agree. And so what we actually plan to do is go and record the real thing get the actual horn, bell, and all the other auxiliary sounds that you would hear when, you, um, when you're when you standing at the station and these things go by and make a stop. There's a lot of different sounds you could hear. We want to have most of them. Yeah. Now, is it true that we're going to have an audio recording of a toilet flushing? <laughs> I know it sounds like kind of a joke, uh, but actually the, those vacuum toilets are pretty loud. They make a really loud whooshing sound uh it's very distinctive so yeah i'd, I'd like to have that on there if we can um, yeah well we'll see what yeah. we can do that, that certainly would add some interest to those operating sessions <laughs> <laughs> yeah the toilet won't actually work but uh, you can pretend like uh, pretend like it's broken have to call a crew out to fix it or something yeah Another interesting thing here too on this page is the five pack that we've got here, um, which is all different names and numbers than the singles. So it's actually two complete trains uh, that you could potentially get. And the five pack with sound comes with a cab car with sound and one other car with sound. So you get a nice mix of the sound and non-sound cars in your train. That's great. Yeah. All right. Let's see. <laughs> All kinds of features. Um, what I was really impressed with is uh, researching these a little bit, finding out that the uh, the smoke tint on the the windows is kind of a brownish tint. Um, we're used to a lot of gray tints, but. Uh, with the interior being lit on all these cars, you know, you're still going to be able to see all those cool inside details. And then with the uh, sound cars, um, those are going to come with those cube speakers. So we're going to have some great audio there, a lot of resonance. Yeah. Them. And here you can see that yeah. the interior of the Coach Cafe with the full kitchen inside there. That's cool, man. Yeah. And all the lights too, right? We got the interior lights on both levels, uh, as well as the marker lights that work on each end. And then the cab car, of course, headlights and ditch lights on there. Yeah. Yep, and lighting, you know, we talked to, uh, about having these lit. There's gonna be the, the headlights, the ditch lights, the uh, marker lights, the mm -hmm. interior lights, um, these are definitely going to stand out and they're going to be you know, ready to go. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait to do, do some night running with these. They're going to look awesome. With the, with the lights sort of shining through the tinted windows, it'll look real nice. <clears throat> All right. Well, you have anything else to say about California cars before we move on? Um, I mean, we're just kind of going over them quickly right now they're you know showing you guys what's available i'm sure that um, jim will go over them in more detail sure during one of the next train tuesdays so if you have any more questions make sure you get ready let them know then i, I think i just uh i, I just uh 
had a faux pas there. I think I called them California cars, didn't I? Uh, well, you know what? The California cars are very similar to these, and we've gotten quite a few requests for those as well, especially now that these are out. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw those in the near future as well. Yeah, what it, it would make that? sense for us to do all the research on the Surfliner cars without concurrently doing the California cars because they are very similar. There's enough differences that they're going to need some new tooling, some different bodies, right? Details, right. but uh, yeah, and when you do a project like this, you want to make sure you have all the options so that uh, you know if the Surfliners do well, absolutely going to do those California cars. And for a North, a Midwesterner like myself who hasn't had a chance to ride them. I'm going to constantly screw up. <laughs> uh, liners don't worry them. about it. To make things even more confusing, the surfliners also run uh, in Northern California. There's a group that got painted in Amtrak California paint. So just to make it even more confusing. <laughs> well, this definitely won't be the last time we run these cars. We're going to have to do uh, more names, more numbers, more paint variation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're going to, we'll, we'll pick up all those other uh, cool. other pieces that people are wanting we're not we're not trying to forget anybody here <laughs> all right <clears throat> all right so what was that uh mt4 that i was seeing down there well these are beautiful these are uh, uh yeah. genesis um sp locomotives i you know, my interest is square in the 1980s, and by then there was only tours <laughs> around. So I'm not by any means an SP Steam uh, aficionado. Um, what I understand is these have been upgraded. Uh, we've put in LEDs in the uh, the headlights, um, whereas in the past it's been incandescent bulbs. The sound system has also been upgraded. Cube speakers, yeah. Tsunami 2 sound. Yeah, first time for Tsunami 2 with these. Um, and also, I want to point out these green boilers, uh, which is a pretty cool feature. They were actually delivered with the green boilers. Um, they weren't painted green. It was it was a material called Russia iron, and that was the natural look of that material. Um, there weren't any known color photos of these things with the green boilers, so we had to work with some SP experts and, and ask around, and try and come up with a color for it finally came up with something that we were happy with. And so that, that'll be the first time ever for those. Those are neat. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing those. those cool. All right. And those are going to be 509.99 is the MSRP on that for uh, DC. 599 with that Tsunami 2 sound, which of course is MSRP, so you'll find dealers and internet folks who will have that for less. But beautiful locomotive, really well done. And then we're, we're doing it with the, the Skyline casings as well. Yeah, and the daylight, the partial daylight, which is, you know, who, who isn't going to like that? Um, I think, uh, what did those run on i think it says down in the text what train that that those ran on yeah the san joaquin daylight so right through my neck of the woods right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah they look gorgeous i'm really excited to see the the genesis steam program keeping keeping going on. It's it's definitely a lot more work than a diesel locomotive, a lot more parts. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm really happy to have steam projects and hope that we can continue to, to bring in steam projects. There was a couple other upgrades on these things, too. Um, one of the weak points in the model was the, the pickup system. It was mm -hmm. uh, pretty vulnerable to shorts. It, even a minor short would sometimes melt the contacts. Uh, we went ahead and beefed that up with these. Uh, we also improved the traction tires so they contact the rail better. Uh, I think we added a firebox flicker too. Um, just a I couple other. I think I remembered on. that, but I didn't want to say it because I don't. I didn't remember that. Let's see if we can get down there <laughs> into the, the details. Yeah, the, the the details will tell. Um, 
what I don't remember. New features. There we go. There it is. Ah, I don't see Firebox Flickr, uh, so maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, no, that one's a tough one because it needs some additional tooling sometimes to do. But yeah, and the, the harness, we, that one was beefed up too. So all those yeah, true. broken connectors that people commonly experience in steam engines because they're unplugging and plugging. Um, <laughs> you make sure that lasts for life. It's a pain when you got to fix that. And the wire pulls out. <clears throat> cool. Well, those are going to be sweet. Yeah. So what else we have going on this month? Well, we've got another run of uh, Genesis box cars. These... Yeah. Is it uh, is it Seiko, Seiko, Psycho? Um, tell us what you think in the comments. I I've heard them all. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I didn't didn't say it because I. I just didn't trust myself to pronounce it right either. But, I, I kind of like Psycho, but but you know that takes one to know one, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love these cars because back in the per diem days, there was so many unique uh, unique paint schemes for small regional railroads. I was uh, I was just looking uh, on uh, the internet the other day, and I grew up in southern Wisconsin. But now I'm living in Central Oregon, um, just a mm -hmm. few miles away from a town called Prineville, and uh, oh yeah, they they're one of the only city-owned railroads in the country left. But they had these bright orange boss cars, and mm -hmm. I found a photo of a two-car train going through my hometown with one of these <laughs> bright orange city of Prineville box cars on. And it's like they get around. It doesn't matter where the railroad uh, name was; they, you're That's gonna find cool. them. Yeah. And of course, yeah, as soon as the per diem ended, those boxcars went on the market and was sold and bought and traded uh, traded railroads real fast. So we've got some prime for grind there. Yeah, you see there the, the Hutchinson Northern, um, which is now Atlantic and Western, which is a great example of what you just talked about, a per diem car now patched out for something else. And then you got other, you, know, you got class ones too, though. You got um, at least class ones in their in their day, uh, Boston and Maine, mm -hmm. Norfolk and Western. And then you got some Western. Canadian Pacific there as well. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those Norfolk and Western cars. They get around. They're so easy to spot. That big black box car with the white letters. Yeah, I always like that scheme. Um, and those are actually labeled for for food loading too. So you got some cool industries so you can switch with those. That's great. And a lot of different eras there. Those CP cars are going to be 2006 to current. Mm -hmm. Western from the 70s. Vermont, or sorry, Virginia Central from the 1970s. Yeah, and you got some 90s era cars, grind for grime. So you got a good mix there. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, box cars. <laughs> That's why I modeled the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can't have enough of them in the 80s. <laughs> right, so yeah, Genesis, Genesis cars. So you got separate ladders, separate grab irons. You got brake hoses, cut levers, all the brake detail on the underframe. You got Genesis trucks with the roller bearing caps yeah. that spin. Uh, those photo etched uh, crossover walkways. That's a cool detail. Yeah. Yeah, those look great. Yeah, actually, you can't see it, but I got a couple sitting on my desk down here for my personal collection. <laughs> I see you've got some trains in your background, too. It's just nice to... Oh, you know, just, inspiration. just a couple. Yeah, just a couple. <laughs> I'll, I'll change them out uh, every time I come on video and people can try and keep track. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I know people ask us a lot why the prime for grime is more expensive than the regular paint schemes. Um, That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot about painting. You know, you have to paint the car twice, uh, which is a lot of labor and uh, 
a lot, just a lot more steps. It takes a lot longer to, to do the painting stuff because you have to wait for everything to dry. And, uh, sure. Not only that, but you've got individual masks um, that need to be applied and sprayed. Uh, and you've also got road number specific paint schemes, like, like in this case, Canadian Pacific. You got two different pieces of artwork, even though they're similar. It's yeah. a whole different set of printing plates that you got to yeah. do. Um, even different color for those uh, masks. See, mm -hmm. kind of a tan mocha and then a, a dark chocolate brown there. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, prime for grime, it it it's more complicated to produce, um, so that's why it costs more. But in the end, you got a car that's basically ready to weather, and you don't have to do anything else to it. You just have to throw some some flat coat on it, maybe some some dry brushing, some powders, some oils, and and it's ready to go. Yeah, that's great. I'm gonna pull up a comment here. I just saw it go by. I would say we're not refusing. You might not know that you want it. <laughs> if you, That's more you know, likely. Yeah, if you have product suggestions, make sure to, to hit up that uh, Atherton product suggestion email inbox. Um, and that's uh, that's where we keep track of things. And as someone who loves boxcars, yeah, we're always looking for uh, new paint schemes and uh, good enough requests. We absolutely will do things. All right. Let's see. Moving on down. <clears throat> Into the ready to run 40 foot three bay ribbed hopper with load. In this case, it uh, looks like it's all coal loads. Yeah. I know we've done them with, with ballast and stuff too in the past. Um, yeah, another nice mix of errors here too. You've got, you know, C of G, which is 1950s, through the Chessy in the 80s, and then BNSF in the 90s. It's, it's a good mix. Someone's asking uh, William Freeland, anything coming out in B and O? Well, uh, depending on <laughs> depending on how you look at it, that that's definitely could be considered B and O. Just depends on your time frame. Yeah, I would. You know, my my dad likes to model the uh, kind of southeast area, so he's a big fan of the Chessy, the Family Lines, um, Seaboard Coastline, all those railroads, and I could see him pulling a whole string of Chessy um, <laughs> coal cars. You can't get just one or, or five or ten. It's it's never going to be enough <laughs> with well, coal trains. It looks like we're doing these in four packs. Yeah. So that's what nine total numbers then, right? Yeah, it is. Um, but you know, maybe we should do more someday. Maybe we should start offering uh, ten packs or something, something crazy. Who knows? I've heard of an end scale. Yeah, that's Both true. Guys have too much room, they don't know what to do with it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And if you've got that small uh, tabletop four by eight with an 18 inch radius on these, you can run these all day long. These are perfect, yeah. Yeah, some of those newer coal cars are a bit longer and don't quite look right on 18 inch radius. <laughs> <clears throat> Looking forward to seeing these come out. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> All right. Um, we do some vehicles again. Got the uh, Ford Seabox van. Some cool liveries there. I really like that Delta truck. These are one of my favorite trucks that we make. That that cab is. Uh... It was in production from the 50s to the 90s, I think. It's just so ubiquitous. Um, we got some railroad names here. We got UPS, which, you know, that, that goes pretty much everywhere. 
You got some period trucking companies like Delta. Just a nice mix here. Then, of course, the unlettered white one for. Yeah, see, my favorite's the white one. <laughs> <laughs> that can be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> Absolutely. A big old billboard there for your own uh, logo and business. Yeah. Or your your own railroad or your your own railroad shops or whatever you want. Yeah. I love how all these, these trucks that we offer uh, have the rubber tires on them. I think that really makes them look a lot classier than uh, some of the injected molded plastic out there. Very cool. Yeah, it just doesn't look right when they're plastic. They sort of have a shininess that looks kind of weird. <clears throat> Talking about UPS trucks that are everywhere, you know, there was just a certain online retailer that had a couple of days of massive sales, and I think uh, these trailers are probably going to be pretty busy for the next few days moving product. <laughs> back and forth. So. Yeah, you see these all the time, and I remember seeing pictures of intermodal trains, and it was almost solid UPS trailers, the 28 footers and the 40 footers. Um, just almost completely UPS trailers. Um, and it's nice you got the newer logo here, the big logo, you got the smaller logo, and the different color stripes as well, which are all variations that you could see running on trains or on the streets. I guess I gotta look a little bit more closely at my UPS trucks because I didn't even know they had this many styles. Looks like we're doing three numbers of each. So if you keep in track in numbers, you can even have separate trailers. Yeah, I mean, it, that, those are pretty tiny numbers, but if you can see them going by, more power to you. I, I don't even know if I could see them going by. <laughs> <clears throat> My cursor just passed the halfway point on this document. Man, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so here's something a little different. Um, how much 1890s era stuff do we do? Not not that much. Um, no, that, that early era, steam era, is, uh, is very interesting. But I don't know if there's anyone alive <laughs> that witnessed it <that> firsthand <laughs> anymore. So it's I doubt it. <laughs> reliving uh, grandpa's uh, history there. This the uh, this two six zero is that little NBC engine that they have that old timer, um, but it's been heavily upgraded. Um, it's got a brand new motor, um, as well as the, you know, the economy sound option with the twenty one pin plug for the DCC ready version. Um, it's a nice running engine and it'll, it'll hold a nice slow speed, you know, cause these things didn't go that fast. Um, over the, over the track they ran on, it wasn't uh, exactly high speed running, um, but it's a nice running engine. You got sound and non-sound options. Like I said, you got led lights, um, front and rear, different kinds of uh, fuel types, coal or oil, different kinds of headlights and smokestacks. Scroll back up because I wasn't even paying attention to all these details. <laughs> Looks like most of these have the um, straight stack and either a coal or oil in the tender, and then they got the big or the small headlights uh, as well. Yeah. Yeah, these will be a nice platform whether you model this era or you just want the mechanism for a modeling project and uh yeah my friend's gonna get one and he's gonna make some sort of weird box cab electric engine with a with a jack shaft drive he's just gonna put put the cab right over it 
So that'll be pretty weird, but hey, that's what he wants to do. <laughs> yeah, I, hey, <laughs> go for it. I, uh, <laughs> I love how in, ingenuitive modelers are. You know, we, we can try to get all the, the details right, but there'll always be someone who will uh, take it to the next level or take it in the totally opposite direction. And, <laughs> Totally. Yeah. That's, you never know what someone's going to come up with with these. <clears throat> cool. How about a camelback? Ooh, yeah. See, there's an interesting idea. I never even thought of that. Yeah, that was very much an East Coast thing because of the, the coal. But uh, yeah, well, we could do a cab forward version for the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So these are, of course, are uh, an HO. And if we're going to run uh, these those moguls, we're going to need. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> We do need cars to go with them, but we will yeah, get we there. Yeah, we need cars to go with them. But first, I guess we're going to talk about Roundhouse. Um, yeah. More boxes. These are these are nice cars. Um, they they're those old MDC uh, high cube box cars, and a lot of people have told me that they don't really have an exact prototype. Um, but you know what? They they look the part. Um, they look like a car you would see going down the rails in the mid 2000s or the late 90s, like a per diem car, like we were talking about, they, they look the part. They're a nice filler car. Yeah, absolutely. And being in the roundhouse line, we have a little bit more modelers license to, uh, to bring in some other railroads and to skip some details. Not everyone needs the Genesis level box cars. No, I mean, I work for Athens. I don't know if I can populate my entire railroad with Genesis. <laughs> well, plus if you got to carry them around with you, they're they're going to break eventually. You want something that's going to take some handling. This is a this is a lot better of a choice for that. Yeah. I love that GATX one too. That's that's neat. Yeah, the big uh, upside down pyramid logo. <laughs> and then the Illinois Central with the Death Star logo. Oh yeah, who could Whoever love that? A great box car could look attractive. <laughs> <laughs> and those, those uh, CLC and those OC and E cars, man, those those ran in what seemed like solid sets uh, on lumber trains at times. Maybe an SP car mixed in there once in a while, but. Yeah, I remember seeing a bunch of those in videos. Yeah. And the Oregon, California, and Eastern, there's a... No, that, that was a railroad um, north of you, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're up in north, NorCal and Lumber, Lumber Road. <clears throat> oh, it looks like Vic Yoder's here. Hi, Vic. <laughs> Hi. All right. Uh, <clears throat> oh, look at that. I forgot about these, the, the wood reefers. Wood reefers, yeah. The uh, image looks a little bit better on our, our live view than the, the screen I'm looking at here. I know the, the CAD drawing adds uh, a little bit thicker line than uh, is what's real. So these kind of look faded, muted down a little bit. But I, I understand that they're bright and vibrant. Yeah, they don't. They won't have gray lines all over them. Uh, that's just the way the art looks, um, right here. But yeah, the, these uh, these period reefers, you know, with the Hardings, the Meriden, um, just some really cool artwork um, that you don't see these days uh, anymore. <clears throat> the cons, I like. I like the cons. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. 
a lot of a lot of cheese factories in uh, where I grew up, and we you'd see photos of wood reefers just lining the tracks everywhere. Very cool. Grand yeah, thing. you'd see them running in blocks, and it's cool that we're offering a four pack with these. Um, so basically, you got seven numbers to work with for each scheme. That's that's enough to make a decent sized train. Yeah, in, in that era, that's <laughs> that is a decent <laughs> size screen. Slap a caboose on her and call her a day. That's it. Yeah, that's all the couplers could handle, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. Well, let's see what else we have here. Here we go. There's those cars you were going to talk about. Yeah, look at that Santa Fe car. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> If anyone has a Christmas village, that's going to fit right in there. <laughs> yeah, so we, we did these Overton cars. The road names all match the 260s. Uh, the 260 is a dual service engine, so you definitely wouldn't be out of place pulling these with it. And so you got one coach and you got a four pack. And I'd say five of them is plenty for that little engine. <laughs> New York Central, mm -hmm. Southern Pacific, Canadian National. That's another really attractive paint scheme. And of course, nice. Denver and Rio Grande. And I, yeah, I, how could you not have that one? That's a classic scheme. Yeah. I, think I love the green windows, too, on the Claire stories. Um, it's a nice touch on these cars. Yeah, it sure is. I wish I knew... Uh, knew more about this era because it makes a great small layout. You don't need a lot. And of that time period, you don't even need a lot of industries because the United States was so sparsely populated. You can you <laughs> yeah, know, grass and trees and just go have a single town with a couple stops and which is perfect for a loop-de-loop. -loop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think these will take down to a 15 inch radius. Um, they can they can go pretty tight. So pretty if you're really strapped for space, um, maybe it's 18, um, but they're short, so they'll go around. It doesn't say so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think 15 inches the uh, recommended operating assist. And something I learned is that um, all of Atherin's cars will operate on an 18 inch radius. Not recommended. But they will. <laughs> they will. Yeah. yeah. Now, whether or not it looks weird, you know, that's another thing entirely. But yeah, and if you've got a, a tunnel or another another track next by, you're probably going to have some uh, interference there. But yeah, super cool cars. Yeah, those are neat. The same friend I said who's going to be doing the the weird box cab electric, he's probably going to have to buy up all these because he just loves this type of stuff. Yeah, I've seen a, a number of requests for the fifty foot version uh, overtons of these cars. Oh yeah, I know. Man, it's been a while since we've done those, huh? Yeah, we'll have to make sure we got enough uh, interest in them and then go dust off the tooling. <laughs> Yeah, those are neat cars. Um, don't forget, too, the Harriman cars, um, the 60-footers, and also the Palace cars. I wonder if those are still available. Those are all those old NBC pastor cars. <clears throat> yeah. Well, well, we'll look into it for sure. Because, you know, I, work. since yeah. being, being with the company for three months, I have definitely seen uh, more than a couple <laughs> requests. Not as much as the surf liners, but <laughs> <laughs> got a request here for more uh, F fifty nine PHIs to go with the surf liners. What do you think, John? Um, no, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. we have to be, uh, yeah. I, I would expect to see those. I mean, how, how could we do surf liners and not do the engines to pull them? Um, sometime soon afterwards so stay tuned 
definitely for those. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Hey, we're in N scale now. So all you HO guys, uh, thanks for coming. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> When your wife tells you, or significant other tells you to downsize, you can take it literally. <laughs> Just replace it all one for one with uh, with a size smaller. Yeah. And if so, the uh, Seiko Seiko Psycho uh, box cars in N scale, it's it's still a really nice car. Um, you got. You know, you got those metal wheels, body mount couplers. Um, it weighs enough that it's not just going to derail the second you look at it funny. Um, yeah, I stepped away from the hobby for a while, and uh, I was a big end scaler. Had a, uh, did a lot in end scale, and when I came back, body coupler, body mounted couplers, knuckle couplers, metal wheels. Holy cats! This stuff runs so much better now than it did. If, if I would have known yeah. it was going this direction, I probably would have stayed there instead of switching to HO. But yeah, and this was uh, this is tooling that was cut specifically by Ather, and this is not uh, tooling that we acquired. Right. Yeah, those metal wheels make a big difference. Getting some of the weight down low really helps with the tracking, especially on end scale where the tolerances are a little bit less forgiving maybe than the bigger ones. So that's a nice feature to have. Yeah. All right. Oh, I saw another comment I'm going to pull up here. Not related <laughs> to box cars or N scale. Oh, man. Well, oh, <laughs> I grabbed the wrong comment, but yeah, oh, well, <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you, are you a train man too? Thank you for that. There it is, there it is. A what about a decent U-boat in Genesis? Hmm. I don't know much about submarines. What about you, John? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're on rails. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Alfie's talking about submarines either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of good models out there of uh, early GEs that uh, could definitely take a look at and work on. There's there's some history there in the, the old blue box days. That tooling yeah. is long gone, <laughs> but that's okay. <clears throat> I don't think we want to reuse it. We we want to do it right. <laughs> how about a how about a C six forty three while we're at it? <laughs> <laughs> Some oddball SP stuff. Uh, oh, you guys and your SP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all nut jobs. That's right. It's good to be passionate. <laughs> yeah, that's what it means. Hey, check it out. My dad can get a whole string of these hoppers. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, so the, again, these are nice cars in end scale. Again, they've got body mount couplers, metal wheels. They come with a coal load, all the don't have to buy a separate load. And they weigh enough that you can not worry about having to add a bunch of extra weight. Yeah. I love cars that come with coal loads because I have so many empty cars that there's good intention to build my own loads for them, but I just never get around to it. And I feel silly pulling around empty cars all the time. <laughs> You're losing money on the railroad, yeah, every time you do that. <laughs> it's a uh, sailboat fuel. Yeah, there you go. Power for the uh, wind turbines. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of good requests there. in the comments. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the C four fifteen. Hey man, I've I've heard crazier ideas. <laughs> oh. 
That's a cool looking one. Cool. But I think yeah. every single one was a little different. <laughs> it sure seemed like it. Yeah. All right. And like most of our NCL equipment, this will run on code 55 rail, which is another change to, to the hobby from when I left. Everything was felt like code 100. I'm not sure if it was at the time. But <laughs> the 500 pound rail. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that comes in and comes in one mile sections. It's uh, <laughs> just incredible stuff. All right. And we're going to do the box vans in N-Scale, too. It'd be really easy to do a UPS facility in N-Scale. There's a couple <laughs> of great freight buildings out there, and you can have a, a whole fleet of these trucks parked around it, getting loaded up for the day's deliveries. All right. Yeah, it's hard to believe that they can do these in N-Scale with the clear windows. You got the, the the headlights, the clearance lights on the cab and the body, and they, they paint them up and they just look great. It's incredible what they do on these. Yeah, and rubber tires. And rubber tires. Wow. I think those are probably smaller than the hair ties that use on my daughter. <laughs> you <be> miniature. <laughs> Uh, so she has very little amount of hair. So, well, we have to have, we have, to have a disclaimer that you can't use these tires as hair ties. I don't know. I mean, send us your photos if you do. <laughs> if you're desperate. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. We're getting close to the end here. I can see the slider. Yeah. N scale, sure you guys. N scale Levertons. Levertons, yep. Same, same road names, same uh, number sets. So you can get the five car train between the four pack and the single there. Yeah, and someone was asking, why don't we have an N scale 260 to go with these? We actually used to have one. And I don't know what happened to it, if I'm being honest. It's just, it's not available anymore for us to make. But it's something I'd like to see us sort of do a new version, maybe get it back in the rotation someday. Maybe with some sound options on it. Who knows? Yeah, that would be cool. We'd love to see some small and scale steam. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're right. I think the tooling experienced an accident. It wasn't intentional. Um, yeah, for whatever reason, I don't know. We just we just can't make it anymore, which is unfortunate. But yeah, there's, some of those new small motors they have are, are would be perfect for the for something N scale small steam. Yeah, and I, I think that's the reason why they they didn't fix the tooling is because it was outdated technology and the investment in tooling is so incredibly high. I, I don't think people understand how much it costs <laughs> to actually make some of these. Oh yeah, it's it's just crazy. If you're um, gonna if you're gonna redo it, you really need to consider your options and uh, put the improvements in it that you can. A lot of money. It's a lot of time too. It's a development time, one to two years at least. Yeah. Go cross-eyed looking at all those details. <laughs> Oh, N scale empty fours. Yes. <laughs> James Deluna. I like that. I like that comment. Yeah. All right. And then we're at the parcel trailers for N scalers. All right. These are the guys that can load up those. Uh, trailer and flat car loads. <laughs> Someone's going to find out how many N scale parcel trailers can an HO scale parcel trailer hold. That is a good question. <laughs> I 
I'm thinking four. <laughs> four. Yeah, first one to answer gets a shout out on the next train Tuesday. <laughs> are the roofs removable? Are the uh, on these, yeah, they are. Yeah, so we, yeah. We, could, we could physically test it out here. Yeah, roof comes right off. You can you can add weight, for example, if you want to run it on a flat car, you want a little bit more weight. Uh, or, or if you actually want to load it up with something, uh, no one's going to know, but you can do it. <laughs> sure. Or uh, I, I think it's a real popular trend is to replace parts with uh, aluminum foil and damage them. Run them under that <laughs> low bridge that's a little too low. The trailer's too high. And oh, man, that them. would be cool. Load that would be awesome. With some uh, cardboard boxes. <laughs> oh, I've never seen anyone do that, but that would be such a neat scene. Yeah. Recreate that low bridge thing. And, and it's, it's totally rubber related. It's usually a rubber bridge that, uh, that they hit. Yeah. It's real hard to raise the railroad. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not going to happen usually. <laughs> All right. I think we're at the end here. I think so. I think that's it. That's wow. a lot of cool new products for July. And of course, we've got, uh, you know, like you said, it takes a, over a year, almost two years to, to bring a new product out. So we've got uh, plans for a lot of a lot of products that folks are requesting that's coming. Um, we'll probably do a little teaser here coming up soon of some of the, the new product that's not not ready for pre-order, but uh, we want you to know that we're working on it without the wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> Yeah, but like like John said, we got a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, stay tuned in. We're going to get more sneak peeks throughout the year. You know, we gave a sneak peek about the surf liners, and everyone was was excited about that. And now they're actually available. So we don't like to, to sneak peek stuff unless we're actually going to do it. Um, that's that's really the goal here. Yeah, and and of course we we don't want to tell you that we're going to make something and then you know it gets delayed for four years. So when we're comfortable talking about something saying that it's coming soon and we'll reveal some images you know we're really confident at that point that the the product is in fact coming um and uh, you probably as much as i hate to get your hopes all built up <laughs> for a product that just never quite comes to fruition yeah i don't want to call out any manufacturers or products but uh I was really excited for some SD thirty eight dash twos um, that were going to be made, and and I'm still waiting for them. They were going to do uh, some really cool paint schemes. That's my favorite locomotive, so maybe someday we'll still see them. Yeah. Well, did you uh, send an email to Athern Product Suggestions? You know what? I should do that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I should. Maybe they'll uh, maybe they'll come through for me. Yeah. I, you never know. <laughs> All, all right. right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the great comments and suggestions. Yeah. We do take all the suggestions seriously, so keep sending them in. Um, yeah. Thanks for putting up with uh, myself and Janik, and we'll we'll bring Jim back real soon to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. Have a good day. I hope you stay cool in this heat wave that's coming out there. Uh don't remind me, it's supposed to be over 100 this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> head, head to the basement if you have it and play with your trains. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Have a good one. Bye, everybody. Bye.